Hello everybody and Happy New Year to all here in 2024. Ah, I've got a glass of, this is hot water. Ah, because uh, I'm on my new regime of uh, just meat, oily fish, salt water for 90 days. We're going to see what effect it has on the old brain. Okay, rated 1589. This is going to do a 15 plus 10. I enjoyed yesterday's game. That's a very satisfying game. Okay, we've got a player opponent rated 1450 from Greyland. Click here to see our stance on the war in Ukraine. Okay, got Alakine's defense. <clears throat> um, now, you can get into all kinds of shenanigans. I'm going to avoid all such shenanigans by going Vienna style. And now, if my opponent plays e5, I'll probably go g3 Vienna. Okay, we've transferred, transferred, transferred into a perk, apparently. See, I don't think chess.com should tell you what the name is of the thing. Um, okay, so. Grab the center just on principle, I think, is, is, the, is the idea. And now it says it's an Indian. Okay. So you see, the thing is, if I play some kind of gambit, right, then chess.com's telling my opponent that this is a gambit rather than my opponent just did something random and it's dumb looking. Okay, so we've got both knights looking at both pawns. This one is defended. This one is defended by Queenie. Um, this one's defended only by the queen, right? So I can't do that move. This bishop I don't think belongs on e3. Not really. So I guess I'm just going to bring out my other knight. I thought about bringing it to e2 to facilitate f4, but I don't see the reason. Okay, we have a pin. And now, now if I if I break the pin with the bishop, I mean option two is actually kick. Right, we should consider both. If I break the pin with the bishop, this pawn is still defended by that knight, and this pawn is still defended by my queen. So I don't that knight isn't needed there. The only reason it's needed is to prevent the bishop from taking my queen. So um bishop e2 is a is an idea. The the question you then need to ask is: well, does my bishop actually want to be there for later on in the game? And it's it's a it's a reasonable square for a bishop to be on, for sure, right? Would it prefer to be on here looking down at, at f7 and g8? Possibly. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I think that's valid. I think it's a fair move. h3. What if he goes back? That's the first thing you should say. Am I going to follow through with, it, with g4? Um, I don't know. Am I prepared to double kick? Well, what have we got? We've got a space advantage. This would gain lots of space on the king side, and I'm not gone. Okay, I've, I've talked myself into. I'm not obliged to short castle at all. So I'm happy. Oh, you took. Don't, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Okay, well, all right. Now we have a slight issue because my queen is the only defender of this pawn. What is under attack, right? So what I really need to do now is um, take back with, but in general, in general, it's not the most advisable thing in the world. However, that is the only way that doesn't drop this pawn. So I am going to do it. I have just captured towards the center. I do now have an isolated H-pawn. My plan is going to be relatively simple. Get this bishop out, 
to one of these squares, lift Queenie to one of these squares, and Longcastle. And then I've got quite a gang here that can just, I mean, I don't, I, you might consider trying to push in the center first, but I think getting the junk out into the board is a bit sensibler. Okay. And again, this is what we, what we do is we say, okay, what happens if I take? If I take pawn takes, we might trade queens. I might get a rook on the open file. What's in it for me? Push is another option. Now push, as we had in yesterday's game, you know, discussion about closing down the center. Closing down the center also closes down that bishop quite dramatically, actually. And it, you can't think it to here because it's still shut out. So actually, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I'm absolutely, I'm not going to trade. And the other option is, what if I do something else like bishop e3, you know, let opponent trade? No, I'm going to push. I'm going to push on here. And it comes with tempo. It's now the horse got to move. I am behind in development. I'm, I'm somewhat tardy. I wouldn't say I'm behind my opponent necessarily, because in terms of control of the board, look, I'm controlling one, two, three, four squares, five, no, five, six squares, seven, eight in his side of the board. How many is he controlling in my side of the board? Four. That's it, you know? So in actual fact, although these bishops are still on their starting blocks, right? Because the central pawns are, have now moved, these bishops are exerting some influence on my opponent's half of the board. Which means there's squares where he, he's going to have to think before putting stuff. Okay, he's, he's, now he's thinking about what am I going to do with my horse? My lovely horse. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to, while he's thinking about that, I'm going to think about this. Huh. In it comes, precious. Okay. Now, it attacks this. It puts the lotion in the basket. Takey, takey, doesn't it work? He's got, an, he's got, he's got his horse right up in my face. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not having it. It is also attacking this pawn, which is defended only by the queen, right? Also, anyway, I wanted to get my dark square bishop out, so I'm, I'm considering this. If I go face off that, then the queen still defends this. I'm threatening to take it, takes, takes. What else can he do? C5? Maybe. Um, I mean, the other option is like to pivot this knight round to one of these two squares and contest the knight that way. But here is not good because he captures on there with check because the queen's blocked. So that's out of the question. This move. He takes, bishop takes. c5 is then not playable. So that's what I shall do, actually. So what I'm trying to get across and what I'm trying to practice myself is this habit of looking completely dishpan, dispassionately dish, dish uh, at your candidate move options. And then just deciding which one you like, for good reasons. So, and, and it's, it's the cumulative quality of, of, the, of those decisions, those choices that you make between well, decisions more than choices, okay. Um, 
What's the difference? Well, a decision is something that you make for reasons. A choice is something that you make. You know what I mean? I choose it because I choose it. Anyway, so now, now this knight has now moved away from here, right? Look, we have a semi-open G file. I think it's just time to develop this bishop. I'd love to put it there and attack the queen. That, that is not very feasible because of this. I mean, I could push f4 and start to poke at his, his center. If f4, if he takes, then I have a reason to develop my bishop. And queen here, maybe. I've got queen d2. F4, is, is this actually forcing, right? And, and you should consider moves that at first don't look right. You know what I mean? I mean, and also this bishop's not coming anywhere. This knight can't go anywhere by law. Another option is even h4. h4 might allow me to do this. h4 stops his queen from coming here. Which she's not going to do anyway, actually, so why am I even talking about it? She, she might go there, she might go there, she might go there. What my opponent wants to do is get his king to safety. So the queen might fly out, might want to fly out at some point. This also stops that anyway, but I'm kind of thinking that. And you see, if he doesn't take, let's say he does, you know, a plan B, right? What's my idea? Is my idea that I'm going to peel open the center? I just don't know. The, the other option is where do I put my queen? Right, am I going to just get my queen off the back rank somewhere? What's my plan? I haven't even got a plan. Well, I, I, I haven't really until... I think until my opponent castles, I think my, my plan is going to be... Let's think what the plan should be. Okay, I'm gonna push h4 while we wait, actually. And and just kind of, because he's made no signs of castling, okay? And he's not about to. Okay, the bishop's gonna come all the way back here. Reason is, I've got a wall, a pawn wall here, and my, my bishop serves no use whatsoever on any of these squares, right? And also, coming back here, Again, that just imprisons me behind my own pawn. So we, we, we all the way home. And then h3, you know, is a reasonable square for that bishop. And why have you just done that? Oh, he thinks I wanted to do that. So this dark square bishop now can't go there or there. So where's it going to go? It's probably going to go here, right? Might inhibit the knight a little bit. I have this move now, but I think I think we should prioritize castling right now, don't you? Or does my bishop want to go to d2? No. It's in front of the queen there as well, so... I mean, this is not a fine place for that bishop to be, but to be honest, my opponent's position is... Um, A bit shite. Do you know what I mean? This this is terrible, Bishop. At least my Bishop has got, you know, views of the open countryside. My also, also ideas again of Queen Bishop battery against the hook pawn, you know. Not to be sniffed at. So idea is basically Queen D2 long castles. And then just, if, if he's not managed to castle, off you go. You know, former Gary, now Freddy, too. Here we go. Okay, so he's, he's put his thing out. I'm going to play Queen D2. Oh, actually, I've just <clears throat> he's got two attackers. But actually, take the pawn, please. Take it. Take it. It's yours. I'm just going to castle. Because... If he shortcut, oh, you did, you did it, you did it, okay. Now, is he going to shortcastle? Is the question. 
Because if he does, having no H pawn could be quite good for me. See, look, takes, takes, queen takes, queen and rook. This bishop has to get the hell out of there. And then I'll deliver checkmate with the queen, kind of thing. Not that I saw any of that. What I've just done is, is um, accidentally sacrificed a pawn. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the compensation for that oversight. And I think there is some, which is good news. So the very obvious move f4 is, is going to come at some point. This bishop would probably find its happy place on h3. Okay, is he... thinking about castling. If he does, his king's going to be on c8. Therefore, having my bishop on there would pin the pawn. But actually, having my bishop here is no bad thing. So maybe I just want to put my like, bishop there with the idea of maybe sticking the queen behind it. In case of long castles. I think he probably should long castle. I, I think short castles now with all of this pressure triangulating on h6 would be foolish. I've also got the bishop pair, it has to be noted. Also note this pawn is undefended. This pawn's defended twice. Um, f4 and try and smash the center. Also my queen is, is also, also um, lined up with this rook. So this queen is actually very much Swiss army knife in there, you know able to pair up in many, many ways. Now, what I'd love to do is like drop the queen in here, but that ain't possible. Let's think about what happens in this case. Queen takes check. King has to go there. And then I checkmate with that. It is a plan. Takes, he can't take, because queen takes check, there, there, is mate. No, it's not. Takes, takes, queen takes, there's no bishop anymore. King goes here, bishop here, king goes there. Bishop comes out, king's back, ooh. wants to trade off the bishop. Okay, well, I'm going to just get out the pin anyway. I guess I had that as an idea. I didn't, I should have thought about that. Okay, so I'm going to be a pawn down after this. Question is now, do we take with the pawn, do we take with the queen? Taken with the queen has an immediate threat of queen a7. That is not mate because he can block with the knight. Taking with the pawn, I've still got the threat of this, but now there's no dark square bishop to follow up. I take, he does something. Takes, takes, takes. I've sacrificed now basically a full bishop for three pawns. No. No. A bishop and a pawn for two pawns. So it's a bishop for one pawn, really. Takes, takes, queen takes, check. Forced. I don't think there's a finish. I would have to bring in my rook, but that's fine. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So I think what I'm going to... This, and I go in there. He doesn't sweat it because of that. And I can't... Queen. Who's doing the best job here? All right, I'm going to take just take with the pawn, because I don't need to worry too much. Rook d3, rook b3, <laughs> I 
I think, yeah, what we do is we just we need more, <clears throat> more firepower. My opponent's got rid of both of his bishops, okay? I have a better pawn mass in the center. Can't I just take there? Takes, takes, queen takes, check. Now I don't win the knight. <laughs> takes, takes, queen takes, check. King can go here or here. No, I simply don't win the knight. Also, bring my bishop back to d3. Uh, I'm going to bring it back here because I might want to play a4, a5 to shoo the knight away. Then I can put my bishop back on this diagonal. And once my rook is in place, maybe. Uh. Ooh, uh. So, yeah. So up at, um, what, 7 a.m. today, recording a video outside. If you want to um, follow my health journey over the next 90 days, then go to bigfat.substack.com and uh, sign up to our Substack, which you can do for free, or you can choose to uh, support us. It's all good. So we do some ranty comments on there, discussions, um, articles and posts and whatever. Um, but I'm going to be doing, for my 90 days, I'm going to be doing like a video uh, diary on there. Talking about different things and um, what I feel, what I notice. So, yeah, that's the way to do that. So, yeah, I made a, made a short video this morning. That's now on there. I think it's the way to go. You can look at your 2023 in review thing now. I just, I just deleted that. Kind of bored of seeing that graphic. So how are we feeling? We're pawn down. Okay. But it's not about material. <clears throat> it's about activity. Now, the other thing is that I've got all of this going on. I've got to make my light square bishop useful because it, it can't break through this, this wall here. Okay. Is this k k, -k counterplay? k k, -k ken I, I'm thinking A4, A5. Yeah, he might be thinking about the, this kind of malarkey. But I've got pawns looking at these squares. Get him playing in uh, nine seconds flat. That knight moves, so I can stick my bishop back here. <clears throat> um, where does my rook want to be? If my, let's say my bishop comes, is that going to be the plan? For pawn to take, it'd be wonderful to drop my queen in here. Okay, I'm going to lift the rook now. Oh, he's got that. Didn't think about that. I played it too quick, but it's all right. If he comes out, I put my rook on c3. He takes my bishop. I take with the rook. I mean, I've got the option of actually taking with a pawn and that may not be the stupidest thing in the world, actually. Why? Because we open up the C-file and look at me. I've got another rook. I've got to, have got to be careful about this pawn, obvi obviously. Right? Now, queen... Hmm. There is a check, potentially. Duh. I mean, what can he do? He, he can line up two rooks and even a queen behind it if he wanted to. But he's still got fours through if it's blocked. Ah... <sighs> What are you going to do, Vitaly? It is the rushed moves, guys. It's always the rushed moves. Just look at your own games and tell me I'm wrong. What are you doing now? What if I take and take? What if I move my bishop and play b4? I'm 
going to play a little bit quicker, but not silly quick. Because I've made a lot, couple of rash moves, you know. He's trying to say that I, I, sh I should have my rook back still. I'm not convinced. See, one of the problems with, with capturing towards the centre is, is leaving a, you know, a passed pawn on, on the edge. I'm a pawn on edge! Takes doesn't work. I mean, his knight's still looking at that. But I'm, I'm thinking now, b4. And look, the knight, no, 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 yes. Right, so if I get him b4, that's where he's got to go. Okay, so b4, knight, a4. Hmm. It's defended by the queen. And it hits my rook. So I don't know if that actually helps me. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to put pressure and attack your piece. But then you move your piece to a better square. I don't know if that is good. I do not know. He's nearly caught me up in time now, anyway. See, there he's, he's even just got knight takes. But there, let's say knight moves. I don't think I can do that, because he takes my rook and messes up. Oh, oh, now that would be a royal fork. If this pawn wasn't there, you've got to be very careful, because he's threatening not only the rook, but a royal fork, because there's no b pawn, because it's on b4. He's thinking he must have something here. I could even just like think about moving the king out of the way. Here, he comes here. I move the rook across. Think about sliding up. Think about or maybe attacking it with the bishop. Jolly long think about this one, hasn't he? Thought for a minute over his last move. And Queen D7. I didn't ask the question, why did he put his Queen there? Why did he make that move? It's a bit of an odd one, because the Queen actually has no access to this diagonal at all. My Bishop, however, might. That's, I mean, that's a thought. Do you know what I mean? Completely change the whole idea. And biggity baggity. Because what's he got? He's got f5. Bishop takes. Knight blocks. Pawn takes. Do you know what I mean? So I could even do like queen h2. Bishop f1. Bishop f3, h3. You know, just completely switching it over. Or I could just put my knight on my queen here, my bishop here, with the danger of that. No, you cannot come in. The way is shut. Okay, he's moved his king. All right. Okay, so did he just hear me say that? Moved his king. There, knight comes in. Rook here. No, Zara, go away. There, there. Move my rook in line with this king. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. Yeah, we knew that was coming. That was fine. Now, the royal fork is not on because the rook guards it. 
Now the queen is defending the knight. The knight is not yet under attack, but my king might start shuffling up there. Also, there's the option of maybe this. And if pawn takes, pawn takes, that's actually a fork. So king a2, king a3 is the plan, man. All right. Now this is interesting. This is interesting because what he's done... Well, his knight is actually trapped in here. I don't, he's not really done it to himself, though, has he? But it has got nowhere to run to. Do I just drop the bishop back? I do. And now I, I might be thinking about trying to open up the dark squared diagonal. But then there's no dark squared bishop to for backup, you know? Interesting interesting position. It's kind of morphing under us, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? This rook's looking really bad though now, actually thanks to that move. So I think I'm going to do so. I'm going to change like, I think king a2, rook back to b1. You know, now this is kind of closed, but the cost of it to black is that knight that is out of squares. You are out of the game. So I'm thinking, king a2, rook here. <clears throat> I can't go there with my rook. <sighs> Actually though, my, my rook is guarding that escape square, so maybe I need to do something about that. Maybe I need to put my queen here. Can't put my king there, because it would go into check. So it's gonna be queen here, king here, that, something like that. The queen also really needs to guard that. Because if the queen, you know, gets distracted and wanders off in a daze, I've got takes, 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 uh, knight blocks, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen takes, pawn, checkity doo This, yeah, I mean, I think I'll, w I'll win the knight back anyway, one way or another. Or I just mess up his pawns. If he, if he doesn't take back, well... I win the horse, don't I? You know, so the queen, I think, has now has to defend b5. Which is a problem. Somewhat of a problem. Now he's down to a minute 35. He'd only just caught me up at 6 minutes 03. And he's now... No. What did you do? Hang on. Okay, we've got options, right? I've got an en passant capture here with tempo on the queen. Yes. I've got captures here, which put pins this pawn because of the rook. Captures here takes. There and pawn takes. There and knight takes. So I'm doing that. I don't want to allow this knight out. Simple as. Okay. Rook C one. Okay, these are all undefended. Defended, 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 but in a horrible position. Rooks are paired. That's well defended. That's defended once, defended once. Okay. Does he want to put his knight here? He does. I bet you he does. Bet you any money that's what he was thinking. And it's good thinking. I'm still planning on king a2 for no particular reason. Um, which I think is still fine. Can't really make use of this rook. I think it kind of has to stay on the h file because of this pawn. My queen can't really stop the pawn. I mean, she can get in front of it. Takes, takes, takes. I've got a problem with the pinned pawn then. He 
hasn't got that because I take loses the knight. Fun and games. Now my bishop has to defend. Okay, well that's that's covered by the. King all the way about there. And there is a reason for this. It's so that my queen maybe can move away or my bishop can move away. <sighs> and my opponent's running out of time. Takes, 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 takes. I'm not getting into this nonsense. He, he's going to get 10 seconds of move. So I need to create a situation that is complex and difficult enough that 10 seconds isn't going to be enough for him. I've still got four and a half minutes. His... Oh, I've just let the knight out. But having said that, where's he going to go from there? Quite honestly. Okay, I'm just, it's, oh, it's like the stone off at World's Strongest Man, you know, you, qu how quickly you can get the stone. This is when they, they got two, um, two athletes facing each other and they have to put the stone backwards and forwards over the, okay, out comes the knight. This is, this we, we saw, if I come here, he's got that with check, I come here, he's got that check. He's gone back into his little hole. What's, what was the point of that then? Forty-five seconds. But I don't want to make useless moves. I want to make. I need to be making moves that cause him problems. This pawn move I doesn't bother me. But this pawn move doesn't bother me. Here he can put his knight there, can't he? Um, what are we going to do? That knight's actually quite an annoying piece. So what's he want to do? He wants to put his knight here. He can't actually get out. So if I just... I can't go there. This is like there, then I go there, it goes back, I go here. He's not threatening to take with the rook, and he's not really threat. If he puts his rook there, we can trade off, yes. <clears throat> takes. Rook takes. I've got a rook up in my face then. Rook takes, I've got king takes. Again, he's still he's now back to 45 seconds. Go on, don't stop thinking now. Takes, I've got king takes. Rook in here. Got three attackers on this pawn. Got three defenders back on it. Got to do that. The knight may find its way out now.
what I'd like to do. I mean, who wins in, let's say all the pieces come off. I've got these double pawns. He's got this outside passer, which looks good. Here he can move the knight with check. I feel like I want to get my rook onto here. <sighs> Question is how? Can I go there? No, I can't, because he can move his knight with check and then he's got two attackers on my queen. C1 check. <sighs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Wins a pawn. Goodness me. Okay. Gosh. Ah, oh, you and your knights. Okay, he's attacking the bishop and for forking my. Okay, now he's attacking my bishop. And winning, I think. I don't know. But the thing is, this poor pawn. Yeah, it's got no backup right now. So that's the issue. Okay, now. Oh no, just blunders. Oh, God, Hunty. Resigns. Okay, resign that. That was... Oh, it's insane, that, that finish. Felt like I played a really mature game. Up to that point. Hmm. got ground down at the end here yeah I mean black actually had a couple of edges let's have a look at just I'm, just, I'm only gonna pull out my main mistakes moving the king could have won a pawn and then King B8 is forced and then maybe lifting the rook. So a slight advantage. Um, and then here. Okay, that queen move. Right, I made the best move with, with the bishop. And the best move again. But that wasn't it. Should have attacked the knight with the rook. Seeing that the knight is trapped. Hmm. But really tight. Really tight. I did that this. And. I never. Did I even consider on person captures? No. I didn't think about it. I just did didn't I? No. Did I oh, I can't remember. It was this one that I thought about. But that was a very, very tightly played game. And even here actually here. I'm I'm okay. But that was that was actually a losing mistake. Wow. What can I say, Tuffy? My opponent played at 1600 level. 
but uh, you know, made use of that increment. If there hadn't been an increment, it would have been a walkover. But as it was, again, I crumble in the end game. But uh, des well deserved win to uh, opponent there. He had no blunder. Well, neither neither of us had a blunder. Four mistakes for me, three mi for him, two misses and one. Um, but yeah, on the, on the whole there, just outplayed. So yeah, well done Vitaly. Back again tomorrow. See you then.